Hello, in this video I want to have a look at the ancient order of druids and look at world connections through the esoteric world. So usually I speak uh, Freemasons touch on odd fellows a little bit, but now I want to have a look at the druids and the connections between these groups, the Masons and the odd fellows. Uh, the uh, druid order is not um, too well known, but still quite important and through their symbols, their insignia, their jewellery, they have the same uh, esoteric pattern going on so uh, they belong or within this occult realm so they're a mutual aid society as with odd fellows and masons but unlike other mutual aid organizations they're very firmly rooted into the esoteric world so initiation occult knowledge or secret knowledge as well um, what, now they, they're not from the 1700s they are officially formed as the, the modern organisation so there's not a direct unbroken connection to the ancient druids um, of course but uh, their, their symbolism, their ways of thinking um, or they're also very much, in, you might put them under the temperance banner so uh, the modern druids w will stay away from any mind altering uh, effects generally as where ancient druids were sort of well known for their use of hallucinogenics and other types of uh, drugs especially in connection to all the old warriors they'd get them high and, and that was one of the reasons they were so fierce in battle the Romans um, Caesar and others wrote about this but uh, here we are in Sydney and it's 302 Pitt Street and this is Druid's house which is uh, now being uh, refurbished, renovated, it's going to become a hotel I do believe but uh, again so the Druids are a mutual aid society in that they would provide members with things uh, we take for granted now, health insurance, uh, wage protection, those types of things so um, they would pull their money together and uh, paid up members would get this type of support so even things like trade union protection r really come out of organisations such as uh, the Druids um, Australian Natives was a mutual aid society but it was not an esoteric organisation, it was purely mutual aid as were the Druids, Odd Fellows and Masons are mutual aid societies but they're also under that umbrella of uh, the esoteric so in, you could put them um, as element of mysticism around there. So this is Druids House in Sydney. An another important, uh, more important centre for the Druids was in Victoria, the state of Australia and in Melbourne we have uh, Druids House here as well. Uh, still um, up and running, you can see like now the Druids Cafe is underneath. Now I haven't been able to get the uh, measurements but I'm pretty sure it's going to be 132 feet so this building would have all the elements of sun, earth and moon. But also you see, well, he's holding the druid is holding the moon. Uh, there's the palmet directly above him, and also you get a touch of on those columns there uh, as well. The a standard um, uh, decoration, but also which has very deep meaning, is the uh, a campus on this Corinthian type lotus columns as well. So there's an Egyptian element in there as well. In this particular building, they have the orange uh, orange order star, and there's been some recent. Uh, efforts to protect it because it was going to be uh, removed but anyway so that's the orange order again some connections to masonry but Druids Friendly Society they still run retirement homes and these types of things so health insurance savings plans um, general stuff like that so that's under the mutual aid banner and uh, Federation, so the Duke of York celebrations, this was also around the time of the Federation of Australia when they, they're they involved in processions. This is a stereoscopic image, that's why you have the two pictures. You would look in those old fashioned, um, like 3D, I suppose you call it. But Druids very important in Australia, so he's a uh, South Australian Druids having a banquet, but also in another state, Queensland. Uh, we have the Pikedale Soldier Settlement, so returning World War One soldiers, the Druids organised and the Pikedale Soldier Settlement uh, included Army Ends, Passion, um, Passchendaele were the suburbs in that area, but uh, no, another example, the Ancient Order, Order of Druids uh, in New South Wales, they had a credit union which was um, liquidated in 2000 and there's still some money uh, uh, which can be claimed in case you do know of any connections there. Uh, one of the um, druids would organise all sorts of events, fundraising events, but others, and they would wear these beards and the robes. Now, one of the curious things is that one of the uh, 
events that members were, would have to take part in were nighttime processions where they would paint their face green and walk the streets with um, flames, torches. And so, again, this uh, would, would have been quite a sight for the people. But uh, they're also involved in social events, fundraising, for instance, in Curry Curry in, uh, where was it, uh, it's... 1911 but uh, fundraising you can also see their banner the all seeing eye so they, they really have these same symbols but they also are involved in good works in that they would raise money for for hospital creation all these types of things as well as a mutual aid element where they would help fellow members out um, funeral expenses all these type of things you really got looked after when you're in one of these mutual aid societies Recently I posted a video on some of the connections with the RPA Hospital and Freemasonry and Prince Alfred, the second son of Queen Victoria. He was a Freemason, a Grand Master, and in 1868 he did a tour in Australia and you would see that when he came out, the Masons, Oddfellows, Druids and Foresters, another one of these organisations would organise processions. So for instance in um, Brisbane, and this archway, but an interesting point about the arch, so that was a, a stone arch. When he come down to Newcastle in New South Wales, Oddfellows, Druids and Foresters were part of a procession and they built a coal arch. And when he visited Maitland, very close to um, Newcastle, the same thing, Oddfellows, Druids and Foresters, amongst others of course, uh, there was a procession, a parade, and they had a archway made of wheat. So you have this sort of elemental thing going on here, which was sort of which was rounded out because when he finally arrived in Sydney, they built a triumphal arch of light. So he had this electricity light. So we've got coal from the earth and uh, wheat for the like cornucopia for um, fertility and um, abundance. But uh, during his visit, uh, Prince Alfred there was an assassination attempt while he was attending a picnic organised by Freemasons. The Grand Master William Vile uh, come to his rescue. He gave. Uh, it was, he was given a reward, reward in return and, and that's how the RPA was born. But the Druids are, are spread across the world, so across the ditch over in New Zealand. Uh, there were Druids branches over there and they were um, very much warranted and connected. Uh, they got their warrants from the uh, Australian branch. There was a sort of a de direct con connection there. Also pay attention to their sashes, uh, Lear and, and these other things. But over in England, the Druids um, still now, but especially back then when the Druids order as a as a larger society at Stonehenge, they would have many of their um, meetings and uh, initiations and this type of thing. So the organisation was built mainly for the working man, but uh, it goes a little bit beyond that. So again, here we see one of it. This is in 1905, so one of the events they have here at uh, Stonehenge to sort of reinforce this. Uh, a older connection but um, as is often the case uh, even like odd fellows as well would, would have uh, members who are not just from the common folk but would also have patrons um, and gain their warrants by having higher level uh, very influential people amongst their connections so and he might recognize Winston Churchill I think this is 1908 he was a um, member of the Druids and amongst their processions and social events, one of the things that the Druids also were famous for was organising a Steadford's poetry readings, plays and so forth. And both Queen, now Queen Elizabeth, but the Queen Mother as well, were also members and would uh, regularly attend um, their ceremonies via Steadford's that they organised. So you see that uh, really from the lower rungs up to the higher rungs of society that at least back in this time the Druids were very important. So mutual aid societies were especially important because we now just get on the phone, you call up an insurance company, you can get insurance uh, for legal health and home insurance, credit unions, but you couldn't get it back in those days. And many organisations of Druids such as here the um, Osset Group and the Sheffield equalised independent Druids and there tends to be a bit of a connection between um, I've noticed uh, areas of coal mining and Druids but that's not a solid thing that's just one observation I've made now. Uh, the Sheffield Druids still now operating where they give uh, savings accounts and, and support also organising uh, again insurance elements but you see now the Sheffield Druids connected to the Oddfellows and this is a very strong connection which goes back quite some time and especially important here in Australia. 
but it's not just the English-speaking world. So uh, uh, in France, there were Druids organisations, and just to repeat that, they offered support, mutual aid, uh, some basic insurance, that type of credit unions, which you could not get access to. So the only way to get it was by joining Odd Fellows uh, or one of these similar types of mutual aid organisations. This is a photo from Belgium, a christening of one of the princes there, and in the procession, the um, Druids from Belgium here. Now, interesting point, I'll zoom in in a moment on this carriage. So apart from the Lear and some other um, elements, you'll also see the appearance of uh, Philfot or the swastika again. So recently mentioned a little bit, especially in regards to how often it appears in Sydney and buildings connected to the esoteric, but uh, still to this day, so we have uh, Druids also in America is one of these organisations. And unlike other groups, it's um, a female membership is a bit more open as where it uh, was not always the case amongst other organisations. And now uh, back in Australia, I want to look at the Odd Fellows connections to Freemasons and to the uh, Druids. Now, uh, Odd Fellow symbolism, very much similar to... Uh, well, the Freemasonic, because they're under this umbrella of the same symbolism, which is the esoteric world. But this is the Odd Fellows Arms, established 1839 in Parramatta, in uh, west west of Sydney. The triple link, so those windows is a reference to the triple link symbols, this free uh, chain link, which is a very, um, what's what the standard Odd Fellow symbol. And um, to be a member of this society, like, for instance, uh, one of the... Uh, benefits would also be cheap accommodation so you could travel between lodges and at and we get cheap or free accommodation so that was one of the benefits one of the reasons why they built such things but uh, Joseph Wagden very important uh, person because he was um, not only a member of the Odd Fellows he was um, instrumental in setting up uh, Druid uh, lodges um, especially in the area around Newcastle and Maitland just north of Sydney and and it, what's also interesting is that, for instance, um, when the Felix Lodge of Freemasons began in Victoria, in, uh, the state, Australian state, uh, that same year you had the Felix Oddfellows um, organising. So it's almost uh, like one of the affiliated bodies, and it was almost like Oddfellows could not be organised until there was... This is just my gut instinct, I, I uh, couldn't um, be certain of this, but basically you have to have a, a, a Freemasonic Lodge and then connected to that operating underneath that you would have an Odd Fellows Lodge and at least in Australia the Odd Fellows Lodges would be very much connected to the Druids. So you have this, uh, through the symbolism, through the uh, esoteric symbolism, these, uh, let's just say, sort of mystical connections, so you, you have your practical uh, mutual aid fraternal organisation is uh, where people would uh, pull together and, and provide each other with services again like insurance, income protection, those types of things that we take for granted they are only accessible to the common man through organisations such as this and mutual aid societies and so you have the same theme not just of the, of the symbolism but also of the uh, the, yeah, again, the more practical um, senses of this. So it's very much, uh, they're all very much connected now. Uh, as I showed earlier as well, and I'll just bring those pictures back up. So 1868, uh, Grand Master Prince Alfred, son of Queen Victoria, visits uh, Australia. Uh, Arch of uh, Stone in Brisbane, Masons, Odd Fellows, Druids, as well as Foresters are uh, part of the procession. Uh, when he arrived in Sydney, a triumphal arch of a light, of light, also to show off uh, well, electricity, what was um, going on as well. Um, and again, Masons were, uh, amongst others, were in the procession. But the point being that in Newcastle and Maitland, here we see the uh, Newcastle a triumphal, triumphal arch of coal, uh, Odd Fellows, Druids and Foresters um, in the procession. And this was where Joseph Wagden, the Odd Fellow, was fundamental in establishing Druid lodges. And as I mentioned earlier, Druids and coal mining, so coal, the arch of coal, and Maitland has an arch way of wheat, but also Maitland is famous, that whole area is famous for coal mining. So it's a bit of a connection there, and also these sort of elemental um, symbols. But 
So that's pretty much it for uh, this video. But again, so the, the Druids, Odd Fellows, and Freemasons Mutual Aid Society, but also the the esoteric and this uh, use of uh, ancient symbols, mystic symbols in their um, symbolism, of course, but also in their rituals and and other practices apart from also their charitable and good work. So. Yeah, so anyway, it's, that's pretty much uh, it, but uh, it's work, worth having a look at if you're sort of interested in this arena and seeing. So beyond the, again, the, the occult or the esoteric and mystical which are terms which has sort of got a, uh, been tarnished a bit by um, materialism and the way that it's grown, they overlook, uh, also by the hysteria by some, um, I think in regards to this, that it's somehow implied with evil when actually if you look at their actual deeds opposed to the accusations it's very much connected with good works uh, charitable works faith hope and charity and so uh, I think so uh, yeah uh, before you uh, rush to judgment on these types of things or label it as some sort of kooky old superstitious thing take a deeper look and you'll find that uh, you might be surprised to see that it's n not what it what it's portrayed to be as there's uh, quite a more uh, something more to it and again multiple layers and you really need to have a look at it in a holistic way rather than a judgmental way um, prejudiced way really and that's the problem is uh, too much prejudice around this built around people who uh, to be honest don't know what they're talking about and so anyway with that I'll leave it have a good one <music>